Good morning, aloha, and happy Thursday to you. December 3rd, let's do this warm up. First off, we got five diamonds since we didn't have any yesterday. Had to throw in five today. Uh, you got three portions webs to complete, and I want you to make a histogram, okay? Uh, pretend like this is Mr. Daniels' grades for uh, my third period class, and make a histogram of the A's, B, or the F's, D's, uh, C's, B's, and A's, right? Now, I don't know if you guys know, most of you, I think, do. Um, usually 90 to 100 percent is an A, and 80 to 89 percent is a B, 70 to 79 is a C, 60 to 69 is a, a D, and anything below uh, 60 percent is an F, okay? So that's how you're going to do that. But go, tr go, go copy it, you know, pause it, go try it, and come back and see how you did, or get help, okay? All right, see you in a bit. All right, here we go. Diamonds, let's do these fast. 54 and 15, nine times six works there, right? Nine times six is 54, nine plus six is 15. And six times six is 36, but six plus six is not 13, it's 12, right? Now three times 12 is 36, but three plus 12 is 15. Now 10 plus three is 13, but 10 times three is 30. We need two numbers that work for both which numbers work there. Hopefully you figured out it was two squared and three squared, All right? Four times nine. All right, 36 and 1.2, what's gonna work there? Didn't I just say something about that? Um, well, let's see what we got here. Uh, how about 0.6 and 0.6? Six tenths and six tenths is a total of 12 tenths, right? One whole and two tenths and six times six is 36. But in order to pretend this was a six, I had to move the decimal over one spot to the right. In order to pretend this was a six, I had to move the decimal spot here one spot to the right. That's a total of two spots, so I had to go back two spots in my answer. Okay, same idea here. What's gonna work there? Well, 12 times three is 36. So how about one and two tenths and 0 0.3 tenths? When I go to add those, remember you line up the decimal, so I am going to get the 1 and 5 tenths. When I multiply 3 times 12 is 36, but I had to move that over once and that over once to pretend those weren't decimals, so I had to go back two spots in my answer. Okay? 4 hundredths, 4 tenths. 2 tenths, 2 tenths. Love that joke on that pizzazz last week, right? What did the doctor say to the man who thought he was a wigwam? That's a, a Native American dwelling uh, group. Uh, home kind of thing, and a TP the next week, you are just too tense. Ha, ha, ha. Dad joke. All right. How do I change a fraction to a decimal? Hopefully you guys are saying divide the bottom into the top, Mr. Daniel. All right. So I'm dividing eight into three. And what do you say here? It won't fit, Mr. Daniel. All right. So what do you do? You add a decimal, bring it up, and add a zero. Because three is the same as 3.0. And remember what you're doing. The only reason you're doing this divide the bottom into the top is so you can change this to a decimal. So adding a decimal in that answer kind of makes sense, huh? All right. Now, 3 goes into 30. 8 goes into 30. Oop, gave the answer <laughs> three times because that is 24. I subtract. I get a remainder. So I'm going to add another 0. Now, 8 goes into 67 times because that's 56. I still get a remainder. I'm going to add another 0. And 8 goes into 40, nice even five times, right? So 0 0.375 is 3 eighths. Now, how do I change a fraction or a decimal to a percent? I just move it two spots to the right. Two spots, boom, boom, right? If I'm going a percent to decimal, that's two spots that way. How hard is that? So it started here, 1, 2, it's between the 7 and the 5. 37.5%. And how do you draw three eighths? Well, halves, fourths, eighths, and shade in three of them. Okay? And you could write it in words too. Three eighths. Okay? Two fists. Draw a picture. I almost always go to a circle when I go fist. I don't have to. I'm going to shade in two of them. Less than half, right? Divide the bottom into the top. Five, it doesn't fit. Add a decimal, bring it up. Add a zero. Five goes into 20 four times. That makes sense. Four tenths is the same as two fifths because four 
tenths is the same as two fifths, right? 125%. How do I go from that to a decimal? Move it two spots that way. If you can't find it, it started here. Boom, boom. It's between the one and the two. Anytime you have a number bigger than one, you have a percent bigger than 100. All right, because one whole is 100%. Now, how do you change this to a fraction? Well, the one part is the same. And 2,500, so remember, you take all the numbers to the right of the decimal, put them on top, put zeros under each of them, and then put a one in front. One and 2,500s. If you close your eyes and I said one and 2,500s, you wouldn't know if I was saying this or this. You say it the same way. Okay? Now, I can simplify this, right? Because I know there's four quarters and a dollar, right? So 25 goes into the top one time and goes into 100. One and one-fourth is the same here. And that's good because that makes it much, much easier to draw a picture, right? One whole and one-fourth. Sometimes people do this. So, you know, this is four-fourths and one-fourth. So one and one-fourth. All right, on to the histogram. Wait, that's science, Mr. Daniel. Yeah, so what? You have me for math and science. You can do both these. All right, first off, whenever you make any kind of graph, you got to have axes, right? We're going to have a vertical axis and a horizontal axis, right? This is called the x-axis. This is called the y-axis. You know that from your graffiti worksheets, right? Remember, over and up, right? Those are coming back. Anyway, what are we doing here? Well, I would take these. Now, you're lucky because I already put them in order for you. And you're also lucky if you're watching this before you do your homework because I always say doing the warm-up makes the homework easy. And this is actually a problem in the homework. So you guys paying attention to this, doing this, that problem in the homework, I'm not going to do on that homework video. I'm just going to say, hey, if you watch the video for the warm-up and if you're supposed to, this is easy. If you didn't, go watch it, right? So... I'm going to go make a stem and leaf plot real quick because that's going to help me here. I'm going to have my 90s, my 80s, my 70s, my 60s, and my 50s. I'm going to show you how that helps me. Now, since this is an order, I just have to go 0, 5, 7. 0, 5, 7. That stands for 50, 55, 57. 0, 2, 5. 0, 2, 5. 70s. I got 78. That's it. 80s. I got... Zero two five eight nine zero two five eight nine. Isn't it nice when these are already in order for us? All right? Uh, it's weird how the book sometimes it does stuff like that, sometimes it's mean to you, makes you work harder. Zero one three, but let's not forget this bet bottom row five six eight nine. Who's who's got that ninety nine percent? Huh? Who's got that in this class? A few of you probably, huh? All right. So I'm not going to go from 0 to 10. Zero. I'm just going to make a, you could go, you know, this is 10, this is 20, and have a bunch of blank ones here. I'm going to do this and make that line a little lightning bolt type of kind of thing. And I'm going to know that this is going to just start on 50, All right? Because I have nothing between 0 and 50. Then my intervals are going to be by 10s, right? Once you start your intervals, they have to be, I can't say this is 10 and this goes to, to 80, right? It, they have to be consistent. That's what your intervals, intervals have to be consistent, okay? So once you start going. Now, I made a big jump, but I had that little squiggly line or lightning bolt that crushed all those numbers because it's a blank part of your graph, you know? Why waste it? But you got to do that if you're going to crush the numbers, Okay? So people know what you did. Otherwise, you're not being completely honest when you make your graph, right? And you don't want to say, well, technically I'm being honest, right? Try that to mom, all right? Technically, I was telling the truth, mom. All right, now the, the, the most I have here, here, I got three, three, one, five, five, six, seven. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go up to like eight, right? If that's eight, then that's four, half of that's six, half of that's two, one. Cut them in half, right? Make my intervals the same. Now you got binder paper, so your intervals look the same anyway. So from 50 to 60, how many do I have? I got three. I'm going to go up to three. 
right? And remember, histogram looks like a bar graph, but there's no space between the bars, and you're showing groups of data, ranges of data. Everything between 50 all the way up to 60 goes here. Everything between 60 all the way up to 70 goes here. That is another three. So that bar is going to go the same height. The only time you're going to have a space between your bars, if there's no data, if nobody got a C, then this would be blank, right? One person did. What if that one person, Mr. Daniel made a mistake when he graded that test, and really, he got three more points. What would my graph change? Well, this would be blank now, because that would go three more points plus 78 is 81. I would have another one in eight. Instead of going up five, I would go up six, right? That's how that histogram would change if that one score changed. Now, what if he just got one more point? It wouldn't change at all. The histogram stays the same. Yeah, he got one more point on his grade. He got a 79 instead of 78. But the histogram, you can't tell. You know, Looking at this, I don't know if I have a bunch of people with 89, a bunch of people with 80, or all in between is spread out like I do, right? All right, so seven A's. I love seeing that. Most kids of any grade have A's, but really, really? Come on, guys. Let's get these out of here. Let's bump them above sea level. Come ask for help at 2.30, please. All right, hopefully that helped. Hopefully it wasn't uh, too painful. And hey, that's on your homework, guys, right? Thanks for paying attention. You get rewarded by having that one done for you. All right, copy it into your homework. All right, have a good one, everybody. Aloha.